Kubernetes Security Learning Series point of view. Fifteenth topic is Container Runtime Sandbox using JVazor and Kata. So I am in training dot Linux Foundation dot org. Right, CK syllabus. And here minimize microservice vulnerabilities. Use Container Runtime Sandboxes in multiple environments. Example, JVazor Kata Container. So we know container has a container runtime. But sandboxes in multi tenant environment. So GVisor and Kata are a sandboxing concept. So first we need to understand what is a sandboxing, right? See if I search sandboxing in the Google, right? In a computer security, sandboxing is a security mechanism for separating running programs. Usually an effort to mitigate the system failure and software vulnerabilities from spreading. So it's a kind of a separating is a security mechanism for separately running the program say if you look at this particular image right if you look at here this image right without sandboxing it's integrated with app if you make it as a sandbox it's completely separated so there won't be any interaction with the other resources it's a part of a security right so let's try to understand right so as we know in the kubernetes the basic concept is Linux system call. Say I have a Kubernetes host which is master node or worker node, which has a hardware. On top of the on top of the hardware, there will be OS kernel space, and where we in the user space we will be running a pod or container. Basically, whenever pod is making interacting with the hardware, it will make a system calls, which is some reads and write etc. Blah blah blah. So whenever pod want to interact with the host hardware, it will make a call to kernel space. Kernel is a central system. So if you wanted to hack, you can send the whatever the wrong, right, all the commands here. So there is no security when pod or container directly interacting. So that's why this GVisor and Kata is coming into the picture. These are the sandboxing technology. What exactly it is? So first is the GVisor or Kata both are when you take kubernetes host basically it has a hardware on top of the hardware there will be operating system which has a kernel and in the user space you will be deploying a pod or one pod has a multiple container this container rather than interacting directly with the host operating system it will there will be a mediator called a gvisor that's what the today's concept here gvisor or kata so basically gvisor or kata will be act as a mediator between the host and as well as your pod your user space so and retrospective all the calls will be from the gvisor so that this container environment is a sandboxed it's a completely separated whatever you do the hacking or whatever good bad stuff everything will be dealt by gvisor so this gvisor will protect this is the what the uh, and the kata is also similar concept maybe you can ask what is a run ac is a run ac is a runtime for gvisor because gvisor alone it doesn't work it has a run ac so let's see in the next further slide gvisor kata container as we seen sandboxing is nothing but a concept of isolating of a container from the host kernel yes it's isolated that's a one second is what gvisor is a linux kernel between a container and host yes it is between the container and the host the run ac run ac basically if you look at here this run ac gvisor will work with the run ac that run ac is a container runtime oci op oci so basically if you go to the google and oci compliant right open container initiative so basically this is a, a governance framework where whenever if you wanted to use any container runtime that runtime has to compliant with all these rules and regulations so run c is a gvisor is using this run c so this gvisor is integrating with the integrated with the run ac now next is how the gvisor will create a sandbox gvisor will create a sandbox with the help of a run ac so means the name is gvisor but internally it will use a run ac as a backend runtime next is a kata container kata container is also similar to the gvisor but it's a 
light weight container yes and in a vm it will works like a, a virtual machine means like it's a sandboxing concept but it will like a, it is a isolation yes that's a basic thumb rule of the kind boxing but as a works as a vm from the host kernel so that's a kata speciality and kata uses a water runtime kata runtime and it will create a sandbox with the kata runtime now with respect to kubernetes point of view right and if i wanted to achieve this two what should i do first is i have a kubernetes cluster with a one master and two worker nodes first you will be doing is installing a gvisor or kata that's the first thing so you will install second you will be creating a runtime class third one is attached to a pod that's it so it's a totally three step process first step is a only one time configuration here installing a gvisor or kata where you will install you will be installing in all three places let's say if you have a one master one node yes you have to install on the both if you have a two node cluster yes you have to install everywhere this is how you will be implementing now second is install gvisor so these are the commands which i taken from official documentation so for documentation point of view you go to the uh, cks preparation guide and the number 4 4.3 right 4.3 use container and time sandbox multiple right gvisor and kata so here the documentation and the links are available and if you go to the google right g wiser sir installation if you just put g wiser install then it is leads to the official documentation page this is g wiser and kubernetes documentation is this one right so if you just go to the kubernetes documentation and search for runtime class also it will take you to the same place right now first let's try to install the g wiser so here if you look at the documentation first curl and then adding a repository then install run sc then after that container d specific configuration then right once you do that then second is what i install second is i have to create a runtime class how to create a runtime class it's a simple yaml file right this this runtime class i have taken from the official documentation and if you scroll down here this is a runtime class it's a simple configuration right runtime class and you will be specifying a name is your favorite name my class and handler is a run sc why run sc because i wanted to use a gvisor gvisor use internally what run sc so i will be adding a run sc let's say if i wanted to make use of a kata container so just create a handler as a kata and give a some other name right you created a runtime class what is the third step the pod say let's say this is a simple pod i have created and where should i attach you will be attaching this particular runtime class to the pod how you will attach runtime class name equal to my class where is this my class name this is a my class 1 my class 1 here this is a my class 2 my class 2 here you will be referring that's it if you don't specify this it's a normal if you specify it's a this specific sandbox so let's see this right and this is the end of the slide then now what i we will do is right so yeah so this one first we will install the gvisor so i am in a two node kubernetes cluster right one master and one worker so what i will do is i will uh, i have to install in both right so basically i will split horizontally and i will just navigate to the my folder this is a folder right so now vagrant ssh master i am going inside the master node and here i here oops sorry here vagrant ssh node 01 i'm inside the second node so here sudo su right so now i am as a root node in the root user as a master node now in, this is a worker node so sudo su right so now clear now what is the first step for gvisor installation point of view since it's ubuntu right install from apt repository this is i already done by using uh, when i am provisioning a kubedm now curl copy go here 
number one done in the master node number two worker node done then second before installing that we need to add a repository so let's add this repository number one added a repository enter and here also i will add the in the worker node so this worker node the master node right enter so my master node is done with the this thing right so now in master node i have to run this one right so, right, so it's done so now my worker node also done with this so did this right now i will clear that right? i will clear that right now this is done so now this is installation is completed the next step is container d you need to install so here container d quick start here first step is in the container d what you are doing then this config.toml file you will be adding this so as per the we will go as per the documentation so now i'll copy this right i'm in a master node first paste enter done same thing i will be doing in the worker node one done then i will clear clear the next step is what i need to restart the container d right so now i will restart the container d here also i will restart the container d right my worker node quickly restarted but in the main master node it is taking a, a little bit of time then if you look at here there is a quick tl as well uh, we need to run so that's a uh, documentation is recommend so what i will do is i will just copy this quick tl copy right so as per the documentation will go enter right quick tl is doing and in here also i will do the quick tl right it's done both the places now what they are doing i have to run this done and here also done so, right so now pull engine is not required basically here they are creating a sandbox we don't want to do that right so perfect now next step is a validate the container so now let's restart the container d once again right so it's not required but just wanted to make sure because this script here i installed right yeah and my node 0 1 is ready i will exit and i'll close get out of from here and my master node get out of from here right now kubectl get node right right this is the my master node worker node right 1.23 i'm running now first step is completed installation of gwizard we installed not not kata second is the runtime class so we wanted to create a runtime class so let's go to the documentation or maybe my documentation also has a runtime class but i will follow the actual documentation if you look at the runtime class here this is a runtime class just copy this right and go to the uh, here vi uh, r class one runtime class one dot yaml this is a runtime class one so what i will do is here right so if you look at the handler right as we seen in the documentation right handler should be mentioned if you wanted to use the run sc or kata so run sc you need to change here here my configuration right so here run sc i will give the name as a my class one now right now now so cp rc class r class 1 to i will just copy it as a r class 2 dot yaml right now vi r class 2 then what i will do is i will just simply change the name to r class 2 to and here instead of run sc i will use as a kata right perfect now kubectl apply iphone f r class 1 applied the number 1 now r class 2 i will apply now number 2 how to check kubectl get runtime class it's created a runtime class 1 is a handling run sc runtime class 2 is a handling a kata 
which is nothing but second step is also completed right now how to check that clear cube ctl describe runtime class my class one what it is talking and one class two also right what is runtime class one is talking about the run ac handler whatever is there and it's a run class two is a kata right perfect now we have to our job is to create a pod pod so how to create a pod basically i will take a simple pod you can take any pod so but i have one example here the simple pod this is a nginx pod basically the pod is this one image is a busy box and simply it's while true echo just simply print some message and it will run for one hour it's very very simple pod so now vi pod one pod dot yaml i'll just do the pod right i'll paste it here so this is the my part so what i will do is now i will try to delete this and i will give the pod name as a uh, so um non so pod is just simply i will specify a pod one okay i don't specify any name right apply right cube ctl apply iphone f pod dot yaml right this is a simple pod a regular right so cube to get pod regular pod is running now i will edit the same yaml file and i will specify this is a pod 2 which is a sandbox pod what i will do is here runtime class name i will specify as a my class one right so here runtime class name colon what is the class name i created if you scroll up my class one right so all small letter of course right here my class one right same part two right so now i'll right so now cube ctl apply iphone part if i do it's created a part two now both the parts are running part one and part two where part one is a regular part part two is attached with the run sc so now what i will do is i will cube ctl execute in interactive way of part one which is a normal one hyphen hyphen d message right if i enter this d message right this is i executed in the part one right so it's given me the lot of information about the its kernel right so it's ubuntu and it's a linux version and it's a build and all there are a lot of information is exposed because directly it's interacting with the my kernel so i will execute the same thing for the pod to which we applied the runtime sandbox right here here and pod 2 right see if you look at here the difference pod 1 a regular pod has a exposed a lot of information to the container so if this pod one user is a hacker then he can study everything right everything what is a version what is the kernel version everything so lot of information he can decode and maybe there is a threat but whereas if you look at the part two which is a very very simple part correct this is i attached a g visor so it's nothing is exposed because it that's for the it's a sandboxing so uh, this is the way we can leverage so this is now the whoever the hacker he won't be exposed and which has a very very limited with the more secure and isolated that's what the actual purpose of the this one right as a very simple this implementation you will be creating a first runtime class and then creating a pod and just attaching the it respective that's it and uh, only thing is we need to take care is the installation to go properly via the installation instructions uh, before it's a one-time setup uh, i hope this particular session is helpful and if you like please comment your feedback and subscribe as well thank you